Betsy and Thomas here for the American Intelligence Media. We need to talk about a very serious subject, and it's not a very pleasant subject, but I hope everyone will hang with us. The subject we're going to talk about now is about the Vatican and human trafficking and the refugees. We have written an extensive article about this, and you will see it in the description box below. So click on the link if you want to read. If you can't believe what Thomas is going to tell you, read the article see the research that we have done. Now, the reason that this is coming to my attention today, Thomas, is that yesterday I took this article that we had written last year entitled The Horror of Babylon, and I moved it to the top of the website, which is at aimfortruth.org. And in less than a day, we had close to 3,000 hits on that piece. So I'm telling you, it's on people's mind. Thomas, you know you wrote the article. You did the research. What's going on with the Catholic Church? Well, Betsy, I like the apology that you gave. I'm going to give one also before we start. If you are a fa- uh, if you love the Catholic Church and you believe that uh, Pope Francis is a good man, you you don't want to listen to this. It doesn't mean that we are bashing the Catholic Church per se. For instance, the Pope uh, John Paul II was a saint. And I believe with my whole heart that he was a saint and that there are very, very good people in the Catholic Church. I also believe there's very evil people in the Catholic Church. I speak from direct experience. I was in the Catholic Church uh, for significant parts of my life. I was trained as a priest and I was a Jesuit in the end. And and then I quit the at the t- same time that the Jesuits were restructured by the very Pope I say was a saint. He's the very person who caused me to leave the Catholic Church because he restructured the Jesuits. The Jesuits are an issue in itself, and we'll have to describe them at some point. But our Pope is a Jesuit. Pope Francis is a Jesuit. He should have named himself Pope Ignatius of Loyola, or Ignatius after the fact that he's a Jesuit, but because he was from South America and he was considered to be the Don, the head, the godfather of Marxism in South America, through the Catholic Jesuit form of liberation theology, which is basically a Marxist communist movement inside of the Catholic Church, that the Jesuits continued for a long time because the Jesuits are placed politically, not only religiously, and they are an order of the largest order, actually, in the Catholic Church at the point that John Paul II then restructured it, but at that point it was the largest. And... They also, after he restructured it, he brought the Jesuits for the first time in history into the theology school surrounding him called the Curia. Well, that was an amazingly significant move that was completed by the next pope, uh, Benedict XVI, uh, Joseph Ratzinger, who I will refer to as Ratzinger. And Pope John Paul II, I will refer to him. I have no bad names for him. He is a saint, in my opinion. And there are saints that come out of the Catholic Church or any tradition. So what we're about to say is shocking, and you are not prepared for it. No matter who you are, no matter what you think you know, you don't know about this. And if you know about this, um, you will be shocked, and you won't probably do the research on your own because it's too painful. Oh, it is. It was very painful to even put together. It is so shocking that people, when they read this article to begin with, could hardly believe it, so then we doctored it up, we added stuff to it so that we would have a, a many, 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 many articles and proof from the news to demonstrate what we were saying. And then we had to write another article demonstrating that Pope Francis has basically defied every doctrine and dogma and ritual and tradition in the Catholic Church. He has come to destroy the Catholic Church, it looks, to some people's eyes. There are many people within the Catholic Church who have said these things, and there was a movement afoot about a year ago to get rid of him because he is just completely too radical. Yes, I even saw a letter that was written to the president to help them remove uh, Pope Francis. What is that all about? Well, Pope Francis is, of course, protecting the 16,000 priests who have yet to come to prosecution in America who have been accused of pedophilia and sex abuse and many horrible crimes like that in 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 many in in, let's say one particular uh, priest 400 victims what happened to him he was moved to the vatican 
and told to go into his room and pray for forgiveness. Nothing was done. But here in America, we let's get started on this. When you talk about Pizzagate, you're talking about crazy parents who walked into a pizza parlor and saw child pornography and, and the worst displays and images of child abuse and sexual abuse that I have ever seen. I didn't even know those pictures existed. This whole place, Comet Pizza, was littered with them. And then if you look closely at some of the things that happened there, these performances that they would do that you could hear in some of the tapes that have been made, there's a lot of circumstantial evidence that a lot went on there. Uh, but what they don't know is that just down the street was the original home of the Finders, which is proven and documented, where the FBI working with the CIA stole children and shuffled them through a building just down the street from Comet Pizza. It's Comet Ping Pong. Comet Ping Pong. Oh, oh, so what's the name of the pizza parlor? It's Comet Ping Pong. Comet Ping Pong. And of course, you know, the pictures of the girl taped to the ping pong table and the horrible, horrible things that we've seen. All circumstantial, but the reality is, look closely, that is where the finders were basically child trafficking, which is really, in most cases, not for uh, slavery, for labor. It is sex trafficking. It is pedophilia in most cases. And these the proof was demonstrated there. Or how about with the White House when during the Reagan administration, George H.W. Bush brought in boys from Boys Town and it was all over the newspaper and they were everyone knew this was going on. Bush was using it to blackmail people when he brought basically the rogue CIA into the White House and then basically that's been controlling America through the White House ever since. But what was really going on with the Catholic Church is the following. It was an accident that they put John Paul II into the, the papacy because he was a saint. The next person they put in is total evil. That is Joseph Ratzinger, Benedict the Sixteenth. He stepped down in an unprecedented manner after I think eight years, seven or eight years, and retired, but doesn't really technically live in Vatican City so that they can't charge him with what he did, which was the following. After $4.5 billion had been paid in lawsuits to try to keep the 16,000 accused priests for, who have been you know, accused in America out of the court system and out of the police station and out of jail, they just simply kept paying off the victims. $4.5 billion was spent. They bankrupted, and you can see the names of the very dioceses that were bankrupted by these payoffs. Well, at that point, and then they started to happen uh, throughout the rest of the world, that lawsuits were brought against the Catholic Church. So Joseph Ratzinger, being the ex-stormtrooper that he was, uh, he was a Nazi stormtrooper, and he basically said he came to the Catholic Church because he could smell the food inside and he went in so he could eat. He is nothing more than an opportunist. And remember, there are many people in the Catholic Church who aren't really Christian, and I'll explain that in a minute. Those are the Jesuit, what are called apocalyptic liberation theologists. And they don't necessarily believe in Christ because they don't think the Christ who died on the cross was victorious. The Jesuits meditate on the Manresa, which is a meditation that says Christ will come in a, uh, riding on a white horse with a powerful sword and he will conquer all of uh, Israel. The, pretty much the same vision that the uh, some uh, Orthodox Jews have of the Messiah and the same vision that they have in the Muslim faith for their Messiah called the Mahdi. And all three of those faiths believe that it will be on the battlefield of Armageddon that we will see this happen. Now the problem is our current Pope, Pope Francis, is a Jesuit liberation theologist. We see this in the fact that he killed thousands He's responsible for the death of thousands in South America. He was in Argentina, uh, but just, just to point out how real this is, right now he is in South America. When he went to Argentina, he was not welcome in his own in the place where he came from. And by the way, he appointed uh, his lieutenant uh, Arturo Suso as the head of the Jesuits now, who is simply more his more. He's nothing more than his puppet. He's uh, simply his. 
um, double his shadow. Because at one point we thought that he would just take over that position and he would be the white pope and the black pope and just be the Jesuit pope. But that didn't happen, I would like to think, because we pushed out that information early on and people in the Vatican got wise to that. So what he did was put a puppet in for that position. But that's just Betsy out here thinking. Well, before Arturo Soso, S-O-S-A, was placed as the head of the Jesuits called the um, Superior General, the General Superior of the Society of Jesus is called, shortened to Jesuits, he was placed there because he was nothing more than an extension of Pope Francis, the white pope. And they call the head of the Jesuits the black pope. So we said that he might himself take that position and not uh, have someone else come in because the Jesuits are an unruly group of people, basically. And they're very, very powerful. And they, they rule 27 universities that basically uh, brainwash most of the people who end up in politics in America. But... Let's go back. Why did he not just take it over? Well, he because it was easier just to appoint someone else who was his shadow. So we said that the white pope would become the gray pope by becoming both the white pope and the black pope. He's the white pope, head of the Catholic Church, black pope, head of the Jesuits. He didn't, he, but we also said he'd take over the Knights of Malta. Francis kicked out the head of the Knights of Malta and took over the head of the Knights of Malta himself which we can explain in a minute. It's a group of 13,000 of the richest people in the world all take a fealty oath to the Pope through the Knights of Malta. It's the biggest insider trading group in the world. And so we said he'd become the gray Pope and that he would move to uh, uh, Kazakhstan, Kazakhstan. to, uh, what's the name of the city? As As Astana. Astana. Because they've already set up this whole fake new city ready to receive the United Nations when we kick it out of America. And there's a council for religions, uh, and they've asked him to come be the head of it. But really, what does he want? He doesn't want that. Pope Francis wants Jerusalem, because until he has Jerusalem, the battlefield of Armageddon, he can't bring the apocalypse about. Now, I know this sounds completely crazy, but if you listen to what he has to say, he said, listen to this, folks, and, and then look at our other one. Uh, Betsy, can we make sure that we post that one where we have the quotes where we called him? Yes. The, the horrible names, that, what do we call him, a Sith Lord? or dark, We called him the Dark I'll have Lord. have links. We simply took his quotes and showed how it destroyed the entire dogma of the Catholic Church. One of the things he says is, love failed Christ on the cross. And then he has a whole theology of failed love that destroys everything right there, that alone. Another thing he says is that Jesus of Nazareth is the same being as Muhammad and Buddha. These are his words. We showed them to you in the article. On and on and on. He's destroyed everything. Now, do I believe in the Catholic Church? Uh, well, I'm a retired Catholic, and uh, I've seen so much awful stuff in the Catholic Church that I had to get out of it, and I really hope that the sacred yeah, you got people. out, you left the Jesuits and you went to the NSA. <laughs> yeah, let's talk the pot to the kettle. <laughs> well, you know, uh, actually I left being a bit addicting. It went into the NSA and when I came oh, out, that's right. I became a Trappist for a while. Mm -hmm. And then I had a vision of the next 15 years and I found out it was the secret training of the Jesuits. So they forced me to become a Jesuit. And then I was studying anthroposophy at the time when Pope John Paul restructured uh, the Jesuits. So a third of the Jesuits quit because some of these Jesuits, they don't wear a collar. They're, some Jesuits are married and they are embedded espionage agents throughout the world. If you look for the Jesuits, you'll see the signature behind wars, behind control, behind central banks, behind all the powerful things in the world that control, you'll either find Jesuits or people who admire the Jesuits using their system. For instance, the Council on Foreign Relations was started by a Jesuit. The Charter of America was signed by a Jesuit. I mean, you can go into incredible detail where it's shocking, but let's put it in perspective. The Catholic Church right now, Pope Francis makes $588 billion a year through charities. A lot of that comes through refugee funds that are paid by the United Nations to the Catholic Church that really does very little for those refugees. And then 
On top of that, the most extraordinary thing, most of the uh, approximately, it's, it's tough to come up with the exact numbers, but let's just take the 100,000 refugees who came into America last year, 164 supposedly Catholic named organizations, though if you look closely, you'll find they are not necessarily Catholic, handled those refugees coming in and they got, just for handling them, $3 billion. Now, those 100 thousand refugees have been coming in for some time and when they come in their salary they're paid paid to be here and they're paid by how many children they have and then they're given all kinds of tax breaks and incentives and that money comes in a check through the 164 agencies that place them in america because no american had anything to do with choosing the refugees coming in under obama and previous presidents now that program has ended Trump has ended our $24 billion we give for the refugees through the United Nations. He said, we'll do it ourselves. We don't need you. The Catholic Church is out of its mind. Well, that's a revenue stream. And it's it got huge. cut. It gets curtailed. $24 billion just got pulled away from Pope Francis, who wants to tell us, no borders. Worship the migrants. The recent, recent statement was, you must kiss the feet of the migrants. We must he, worship them. That's right, what he says. He needs money in his coffers. And remember, he is not paying for them to come across Europe, and he's not paying for not helping at all. The five hundred and eighty-eight billion dollars in charities given to the Catholic Church helped the migrants very little. That was George Soros. Soros is the person providing the boats and the food along the way because he knows that he's feeding basically a reverse crusade. It's a, it's a not a migrant movement. It's an invasion. Movement. It's an he's, invasion. Yes. It, well, they have to, even the rich guys need to have troops on the ground. So their troops are these, uh, you know, the, the invasions that we're seeing. But even in the United States, we see MS-13. You know, these are the foot soldiers for the globalists. The 4.5 million refugees who came out of Syria and other countries, Afghanistan, Iraq, and other places people snuck in from all over who went into Turkey. The Catholic Church simply put them into a database, whatever name they gave, without any identification, and that's a UN, United Nations Refugee Database. That's what the Catholic Church was paid for each head of each refugee in Turkey. Then they didn't help them whatsoever. But when they're brought into America, if they are a Catholic organization, truly, out of the 164, they get to keep that money. And then the other ones, we don't even know how criminal and how far that goes, because here's what I'm about to tell you, and this is shocking. But it's a fact. Of those 100,000 refugees that Obama allowed in in his last year, when this came to the news, they went to search for some of them. They couldn't find any of them. But they did find that the checks going to those 164 agencies, still flow like water. And they use the excuse that these refugees don't have bank accounts and that they need the check to go to them and then they will distribute it to these people. When these 164 agencies were asked, where are the refugees? They were told, we don't know. That's not our responsibility. After I think it's uh, 30 or 60 days, I think 60 days, they don't supposedly even know where they are, and that's the reason that they don't know where they are. But then they were asked, why do you keep the check? Why do you keep the government check? Now, mind you, we spent $3 billion a year, but that doesn't count the checks that keep coming. And it doesn't count the discounts they get for tax-free businesses, for going to school. They'll actually get a laptop for their child if they want one. Americans can't get this, but a refugee from a country that Obama dropped bombs on. Well, let's get back to the Vatican and the human trafficking there. Those refugees disappear. One would say, well, shouldn't the U.S. government look into it? The U.S. government has no policy or procedure for missing people. Only if you know that someone has been kidnapped, and that means you better, ha not by guessing, you have to have absolute proof there's kidnapping and then local agencies will get involved and perhaps the FBI if they believe they went across state lines. Otherwise, they don't give a rat's rear about missing people. 800,000 people come up missing in America a year. Well, that's by design. That way, if they don't have an agency looking for it, then it can continue. 30,000 of those are children. The majority of them are 
young, young, well, they're young girls. Let's just get quite real about this. Where do those 30,000 girls come from? Uh, about 16,000 are considered runaways, but they don't look closely. Where are they run away from that they didn't get found by their parents? They run away from foster homes. They run away from group homes. They run away from placements. They run away from all the government agencies that handle these children. That's where they come up missing. And so nobody cares about a child who was an orphan who comes up missing in a foster home where they say they ran away. Who's responsible for that? Nobody. Who looks for that child? Nobody. This is the tip of the iceberg. We then know that in America, sex slaves are actually brought into this country. We know the numbers of sex slaves because we pick them up as prostitutes and they come in from foreign countries. So we ourselves participate in the sex slave trade, but we also send sex slaves out of this country on an enormous scale to Saudi Arabia, the number one purchaser of sex slaves from America. Uh, China purchases not only sex slaves, but human labor, because basically they work them to death and throw them away. And I'm not making this up. This is all very well known. Look at the documentation. Government documentation will tell you these same facts. They just won't tell you so bluntly. So is the Catholic Church participating in human trafficking? Absolutely. Is the Catholic Church know they're participating? The Catholic Church started the Dutch East India Company that started slave trade that brought the slaves to America and the British East India Company. They all took their lead from the Catholic Church, the Vatican, the Vatican Bank, and the imperialism that was basically placed upon the world through Jesuitism. Jesuits are a order of, they're called soldiers. They take uh, an extra vow. They are called um, spiritus militia or the, the spiritual militia. They are armed, they're soldiers. They're soldiers of the Pope. And they take an extra vow beyond poverty, obedience, and chastity. And that's to follow the orders of the black pope. Whatever the black pope says. If the black pope says, go kill someone, no problem. In the old days, when you took the vow of being a Jesuit, you actually took a vow that gave you, uh, what is the word, uh, pre-absolution. So you were absolved of any sin that you commit if you were told to do it by a superior in the Jesuit order, including murder. Even murder is even mentioned in the vow. So you can kill as many people as you're told to kill and you still get to go to heaven. So can you imagine, are those Christians? No. Do they believe in Jesus? Yes. Do they believe in Jesus Christ? No. They don't believe Jesus was the Messiah. Now a battle has been going on between the Knights of Malta and the Jesuits for a long time. And we could get into why it was that Pope Francis, who's not a Franciscan, he is a Jesuit, should be Pope Ignatius of Loyola, that's who founded the Jesuits, who was a warrior, by the way, got his leg blown off in war, went back to Jerusalem, learned all the ways of fatwa and jihad and pogroms from the Jews and from the Muslims, brought them back to the current Pope of his time and said, I'm starting an army to take Jerusalem for you, and I'm going to use the very methods they used on us. And the Pope said, no, not quite yet. First, get your order together. So he did. And uh, basically, then they infiltrated all the different countries of the world. And they got this order together where they were educating most of the kings and queens and the royalty and the people all over the world, not just in Europe. And at that point, they realized, well, we don't need an army. This is our own propaganda machine. We're going to train the young ones to be what we want them to be, which is liberation theologists who are Marxists communists who, I mean, what is Pope Francis saying? That is communism, redistribution of wealth, that the migrant must be worshipped. These are, these are fighting age men coming out of their country who refuse to fight. And why should we worship them? It is an invasion. We know, we know that now in Europe, except for the countries like Hungary and Poland who have stood up against the invasion, uh, are almost lost. Well, let me just state the obvious. Why isn't he opening up the gates to the Vatican City and welcoming all these refugees in? I saw maybe he had like, what, about six? Yes. At one, we, people kept saying, knock down your Vatican walls. How many people, how many migrants have you brought in? So he went out and he brought in 12 people. Mm -hmm. And he kissed their feet and washed their feet and brought them into the Vatican. Then he found out, how many, there were 12, and he found out, 
in the end, six or seven of them were Christians, so he kicked them out. He had accidentally brought Christian migrants in. He needed Muslim migrants. And then what happened to those six? They were placed in a city in Italy, nowhere near the Vatican. So he has helped no migrants. He has helped himself. And everyone knows this, and he's being so obvious that the Catholic Church is freaking out because he's out there preaching social Marxism. Clearly, clearly Jesuit liberation theology and apocalyptic theology. Well, what's an average Catholic supposed to do? Um, well, that's a good question. Uh, you want my Just, opinion? My opinion is this. Well, I guess that's the only opinion I have in the room right now, so go for it. Yep, I'll give you my opinion. It might not be the opinion that a Catholic likes, but it is what we believe, we in anthroposophists and members, uh, many members of the conclave would believe that religion, it's fine if you want to use, use it. It's a tradition. There's mo any true tradition, practice with a good heart can get you to the same place, your higher self, into the spiritual world. Call it an angel, call it whatever you want that you, that, you know you begin to commune with. Do you need a priest, a man who's a pedophile in a, in a girl's dress, uh, being paid huge amounts of money uh, to protect other pedophiles in his uh, male-only organization? No, we do not need any, anyone to mitigate our contact with the spiritual world. Those things were control devices. And remember, at the time that the Catholic Church was in its early stages, it resembled a theocracy. You know, the Pope was a general. He was, a, he, was, he was out with his own army. He was killing people. You converted or you died. So, you know, what the Muslims are doing now is, is just pretty much what the Catholic Church did, you know, some hundreds of years ago. And so we need to get out of the ideas that control, that any church should control you. You should have your own North Star you should find your own path. Well, you're suggesting that they just turn away from the Catholic Church. I didn't if, say that. I know you didn't say that, but if they can't get rid of the Pope and clean up this mess, then then by staying there, you're, you're being a part of it. And the tithing that you're doing is supporting this evil man and his Jesuit troops. Yes, but, but I'm not a Catholic, so two, I may be misspeaking. Two popes ago, there was a saint on the throne of St. Peter. So I'm not suggesting one thing or the other. For some, I, I believe, I'm what, what is called a traditionalist. I believe in all the, well, I'm also a Sufi in, in, in a way. I believe in all real religions because they all have a golden thread of morality that leads you to your higher self. So I'm not suggesting anything except think about who it is that is saying the mass for you at your own church. And if it's somebody who is immoral, get them kicked out. Stand up. You know, 16,000 people brought lawsuits against the Catholic Church for pedophilia. Multiply that times probably 100. Or if you suspect things in your uh, parish, read this article. See if you can connect any dots between what we say and what might be going on in your own area. And when you put money in that collection plate for the poor or for migrants or for whatever... Just be conscious of where your money is going. And that money, unfortunately, is going to a very, the most corrupt, and well, the oldest institution on the earth that, of course, has to be the most corrupt. Look at the Vatican Bank. Look at canon law. Uh, look at who they aligned with, with. They aligned with the Nazis. They aligned with Mussolini. They aligned with the fascists. They always align with the winner. So it's an organization. But in that organization, there can be truth. And that's true for the Muslims. I, If you study Sufism, the esoteric branch of Muslims, you come up with some amazing stuff, which I believe wholeheartedly. So I'm not saying that. We're just saying, be aware. It's not Pizzagate. It is worldwide Pedigate. And at the very top, the elite are the people who are taking advantage of these situations. They make sure laws are not put in place to even go look for these missing people. And they even set up systems that make sure that they produce people that feed into what is now a modern form of slavery. So be aware, pray for those people, and do everything you can to turn in those anyone who's participating in this evil, no matter who they are, from the White House down to the police who are actually covering up for this. So we see again and again, 
thousands of pedophiles who are now being arrested. And I could go on ad infinitum about this topic. I'm trying not to be too passionate or worked up about it, but do understand that Betsy and I have never spoken about this before because it's that powerful and it's that earth shattering to become aware of this. So if the it, article. if it upsets you, that's okay. It should upset you because if you do not get upset and get angry, then you have no morality in you. That's how you know if you have morality. If the wrath of God rises up in you to go out to get these people and do something about it and stop this, that's because of morality. If nothing arises up in you, then you need to look at your own morality because this is the worst form of slavery. Maybe, uh, well, it's it, because it's modern, it has so many ramifications that it's beyond anything that has ever existed in history before. And do not think for a second that many politicians are not participating. Look at Jeffrey Epstein's island. Look at the 26 visits of Bill Clinton to that island without his security team. Why do they go there? We know why they go there. We can name these people. Look at the 200 and uh, over 200 cases of predatory behavior of Congress people on their own staff that it was not prosecuted. We see this everywhere. We see it in the State Department. There are thousands of people in the State Department, the Pentagon, and the FBI who were caught in these uh, dark web stings of child pornography. None of them were prosecuted. In the Pentagon alone, 5,200 people were swept up. Every one of them had used their credit card to buy child pornography. Not one of them was prosecuted. So it's going on. We need to stand up for this. We need to be advocates for these poor children and these people who are being turned into slaves of every type. So we're sorry to have to bring this to you, but be positive about the fact that your consciousness alone can bring it to an end. Trump listened to the alternative media. He ended refugees coming through the UN. That couldn't have been imagined two years ago. No way. The power of the UN refugee program was the most powerful thing in the UN. And now it doesn't even exist because we were footing the bill. So things can change and they're changing. So Trump, look at the missing people. Look at the social service programs where people come up missing. Let's stop this from happening. Let's stop the flow of humans in this human trafficking.